Alright, today's presentation is about the sunflower and I'll be talking about the basic properties, giving a brief introduction, the different kinds, the habitat, how energy is stored, and where it can be found. Alright, the sunflower, or by its scientific name, Helianthus anus, is the best I can do with Latin. It can be found in rural and urban areas, meaning you may see it driving down the highway on one of those long stretches of plains or in the middle of a city, just right outside your backyard, wherever somebody drops sunflower seeds. If there's access to direct sunlight and pretty good, not too dry soil, you'll find excellent sunflower, that is excellent sunflower growth areas. Um, it is the national flower for Kansas, my home state. It is actually why Kansas is called the Sunflower State because there will be fields and fields of nothing but large sunflowers, short ones, tall, tall and wide. And all variations of sunflowers can be found in Kansas. And there are different variations. There, there are not just the classic big head with yellow and yellow petals in a brown center. The Autumn Beauty is a mixture of different fall colors. It's You may find a bunch in, the, in one area and you'll have the reds, the oranges, the classic yellow, and some bright pinks. It's just a beautiful display and they grow up to six feet tall. The Velvet Queen is actually a dark burgundy in color, which is why some would confuse it with a date more of a darker daisy cousin like flower but nope it is a sunflower and they grow up to five feet tall the sun gold is actually often mistaken for a chrysanthemum because they are so much alike in color and texture as you'll see later on and it can grow up to five feet tall as well and the mammoth russian is what you would typically see when you think of a sunflower it grows 10 feet tall, the big yellow petals and the brown center is what you'll see. And a little bit more detail about the Autumn Beauty, like I said before, you see the reds, the golds. It has typically the fall light colors, hence its name, Autumn Beauty. And it does have a more daisy-like appearance, which is why some would think this sunflower is actually a daisy. And the Velvet Queen, like I said, is more of a burgundy deeper red color and the black center is what really makes it unique as most picture a brown or a dark or a dark brown center and these do grow up to five feet tall as i mentioned before too the sun gold as you can see in this upper corner here is the flower often associated with the chrysanthemum Although this chrysanthemum does come in different variations of color, the sun gold will typically only be in yellow and have a green or yellow center. And here you can see the different, how similar they do look, the chrysanthemum versus the sun gold. And at the bottom of the picture we have the mammoth Russian and it's very large, you can see, and it does in the center produce the abundance of seeds. And these are the plants typically grown in order to harvest the seeds or future oil, sunflower oil purposes. All right, the energy, energy ecology. How do plant, how do sunflowers get their energy? How do they store energy? How do they take in the nutrients they need to grow? And just like other plants, sunflowers take in sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, as well as other nutrients that can be found in the soil. Just any type of soil-based nutrients such as hydrogen, there's um, nitrogen, I do know, is found in the soil. And anything like manure-based can be found in the soil. So, um, But the face and the petals take in the direct sunlight, which is why some flowers, you can often see them facing the sun. I know it sounds funny, but sunflowers, the sun, they face the sun. It's where they get their name and everything that is associated with them, why they thrive on a lot of sunlight. Um, 
small amounts of water and also taken into the petals, the face, like the face in the petals. They don't typically store them in those areas, but they actually, I guess you can describe it as seeping through to where it goes into the stem or the stalk of the plant. And the sepals or the leaves underneath the head of the flower or on the sides, they also take in water to store into the stem. But the prime area water comes in through is from the roots as well as other soil nutrients which I mentioned briefly earlier. They actually come up through the roots, they go up to the stalk and are stored in the stalk to feed the plant. As I mentioned, the storage of energy sunlight is absorbed through the face and the petals. That's why, again, you always see it following the path of the sun. And any excess water is also stored in the stalk of the plant as I did mention before. These plants usually don't even need a lot of water. You can, once they are firmly rooted in the ground, then you can water them. I like to describe it as drowning the plant one day and then leaving it for maybe a day or two and then drown it again a little bit. But typically they don't need a lot of water, which is why they thrive well in places that have a lot of sunlight but don't often get, they do need a lot of water. Deserts are not you won't find a whole field of them in the desert, but you'll find a few. Which is why plants need sunlight, water, soil, and then they become beautiful sunflowers. That being said, the type of soil actually needed can be not like these models here. You see it's kind of dry and brittle, but they can act but sunflowers can actually be grown in pots. Depending on the variation you chose, you will need to move it outside if it gets too big. The mammoth Russian would not do well in a pot, but say something like the Velvet Queen or the Autumn Beauty would do very well in these, depending on the size of the pot too. Reproduction. Just like any other plant, sunflowers can have both parts, but you will typically find that plants are female and male. And the female part that's for this example we use one flower that has both male and female parts. The sum the female part of the sunflower, also known as the carpal, consists of the ovary, the stigma, and the style. And within the ovary are the ovules, and they are the things that develop the eggs, that produce the eggs, and the eggs, the ovules actually develop into what become the seeds. Like they harden over time once the egg has been fertilized. The stigma is where the pollen will actually land and it will travel down in the it will travel down the style, not the pollen, but the sperm cells from the pollen will travel down the style into the ovary. Now the pollen actually comes from the male part of the sunflower and it is produced inside the anther and the filament provides pollen nutrients that are carried up to the anther. The anther is also what attracts the pollinators or things like bees, birds, that'll bring in the nectar, that are attracted to the nectar or the seeds of the plant and will transport the pollen to the various female areas. And here is a diagram of the flower. Again, we have the male side which is the stamen and the filaments and the female side can do you can see takes up more of the actual plant with the stigma up here going all the way down from the inside the petal kind of what we would be considered the bud down all the way to the ovary here and within there you see the ovary this is where this darker circle here you can kind of see is what would be considered the ovule and this is what will later develop into the seed. All right, in the habitat, again, like I said earlier, sunflowers can be found in lots of areas. The soil has to be sandy or loamy and nutrient rich, which is typical of any grassland or plain area, as long as there's enough water and direct sunlight to these plants, they can thrive. They're, like I mentioned, they're not extremely water dependent, so don't need to water, water them too much. And as I mentioned, a desert 
you wouldn't typically see a whole field of sunflowers, but maybe one or two. Not, none of the larger breeds, definitely not, but more, some of the smaller, more daisy-like flowers you will see. They do, they are annual plants, so any area that has short or long, warm summers, warm to hot summers, they do very well in. Mild winters that kind of stretch out for the full three or four months. Or, you know, short winters where it's maybe two months of just really cold weather, they can do pretty well in. And here are just some pictures of different environments for the flowers. You can see different variations will breed different areas. There's the typical daisy-like ones where you'll see them and they see the air, sand and the soil underneath. It's pretty dry looking. You got a little mountain in the back. It's not, look. it doesn't seem like there's a lot of water going there, but they still do very well. These are usually about the five feet, five to six feet tall plants. And as you can see, the leaves are actually taking up a lot more of the room, so they'll need a lot more space in order to thrive. In the shorter daisy-like ones are obviously in a ur more urban area, just a typical field. I'm sure it has a lot of water and good soil nutrients. And biotic interactions. What type of life interacts with these plants? Well, you have the typical animals, humans included who use these sunflowers for food, oil, or just decoration in the home. The birds eat the seeds, and petals are sometimes used for nest building, though infrequently because they're so soft. And they actually use the nectar as a food source as well, such as hummingbirds. Squirrels and other rodents do enjoy eating the seeds. Also find deer when they're first growing that they'll enjoy the lovely seeds in the buds before they bloom. Then they have the typical insects, bees, butterflies, wasps, beetles, and you have other nectar-loving insects as well. And you will actually see, well not really see because it's a camouflage instinct for yellow or brown insects to use the, the sunflower's petals as a camouflage against other predators, which is typical of all bugs or insects who have that camouflage-like feature. And that concludes my presentation. My works cited page is pretty much the same as from my profile, but any other presentation or topics, I'll be glad to help with.